Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. One of the most dangerous aircraft, the B-2 Spirit, is currently in operation with the United States Air Force. Not only is the B-2 Spirit a stealth aircraft, but it can also carry some of the deadliest weapons in the world. Stealth combined with precision deadly firepower means no adversary can defend against it. When it comes to ammunition, interestingly, the Blue 82, often known as the Daisy Cutter, is considered one of the most lethal. It was originally intended to clear helicopter landing zones in Vietnam. However, its tremendous 15,000 pound blast, which can destroy jungle and foliage over a five acre region, evolved from its intended function into a psychological weapon. The bomb, which was dropped from a C-130 aircraft, rose to prominence after being used against underground complexes in the Vietnam War and later in Afghanistan. The unique B-2 Spirit stealth bomber represents the pinnacle of strategic long-range bombing capabilities, capable of carrying both conventional and nuclear weapons. This aircraft is capable of penetrating strong anti-aircraft defenses and striking high-value targets with unparalleled precision. It employs superior stealth technology, which reduces its radar cross-section and renders it practically invisible to hostile defenses. The B-2 is an essential component of modern warfare, having played critical roles in operations over Kosovo, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Its capacity to fly over 6,000 nautical miles without refueling demonstrates its strategic and operational flexibility in global strategic and tactical missions. One of the reasons that the B-2 has a small radar cross-section is that it carries all of its weapons internally. At Whiteman Air Force Base, maintenance and loader teams prepare a B-2 for flight. Loaders consist of three members and they use a munitions handling unit or jammer to carry weapons to the aircraft and attach them. Joint air to surface standoff missiles are one of a variety of weapons that the B-2 can be armed with in its bomb bay. With the bomb bay doors open, the parabolic arm of the jammer raises the JASSM into position, where it's attached to the bomber. Another reason for the low radar observability of the B-2 is the flying wing design of the aircraft. The B-2 bomber's flying wing design is critical to its stealth characteristics as it eliminates any tail and fuselage components that would typically reflect radar signals. Using a continuous, smooth contour, 
the aircraft reduces the amount of surfaces that could generate radar responses. This structure not only serves to disperse radar waves in different directions, but also greatly reduces the bomber's radar cross-section, making it more difficult for enemy radars to detect and track. Furthermore, the lack of vertical surfaces reduces heat signatures, which improves its stealth against infrared tracking devices. With the B-2 having the ability to negate any air defenses by low observability, it must deliver the knockout blow to make it worth its operating budget. At cruising altitude, the B-2 refuels every six hours, carrying up to 50 short tons of fuel at a time. A much smaller weapon, but one with a much more interesting history, is the GBU-28 Bunker Buster Bomb. This weapon was developed in less than a month from conception to its use during the first Gulf War. U.S. military planners realized that none of their weapons could reach the underground bunkers of Iraq. These weapons weigh 4,000 pounds apiece and have a 675-pound impact time delay detonation mechanism. This bomb behind me perhaps represents the fastest weapon put into service from the time that there was a requirement for it to the time that it was dropped in anger was less than a month. When a normal Mark 80 series bomb is fitted with a laser JDAM kit, it becomes a GBU. The GBU-56, however, is not a normal GPS-guided bomb, but can also be guided using a laser. A Mark 84 bomb is taken, and munition squadron airmen attach the guidance kit, where after the 2,000 pound class weapon is ready for use. One of the largest bombs in the U.S. Air Force inventory must be the GBU 43B MOAB, but often jokingly referred to as the mother of all bombs. The Air Force Research Laboratory created this large yield bomb. It was initially tested in 2003. Installing guidance kits on bombs is not such a large operation. This is often performed by aircraft maintenance squadrons using a conveyor assembly rack and wrenches. Several parts are connected to a bomb, with the tail fins providing the means of controlling the direction in which the bomb falls. The tail fins are connected to the guidance unit, another part attached to the bomb. Another bomb worth mentioning is the GBU-39 small diameter bomb. The GBU-39B small diameter bomb is a 250 pound precision guided glide bomb designed to allow aircraft to carry a larger number of more precise bombs. Most U.S. Air Force aircraft will be able to carry a pack of four SDBs, 
instead of a single 2,000-pound bomb. This weapon has a 46-mile range. GBU-12 Paveway 2 is another American aerial laser-guided bomb. Yeah. I'm going to go back, clean up our area. Okay. Wait a minute. It's based on the MK-82 500-pound general-purpose bomb with a nose-mounted laser seeker and fins for guidance. Paveway 2, a member of the Paveway line of weapons, entered service in 1976 and is now in service with the United States Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, and other air forces. Cluster munitions take the idea of a single bomb and turn it into one with many smaller bomblets, which can cover a greater area. Airdropped cluster munitions are made from a container that opens in midair, releasing many submunitions or bomblets across a large area. These weapons are intended to strike various targets, including armored vehicles and equipment, troop concentrations, and air defense installations. They are often used in big area coverage operations, which are intended to maximize effectiveness across large areas of land. Unfortunately, cluster munitions are controversial, which can endanger civilians long after hostilities have ended. For example, millions of unexploded bomblets from the Vietnam War remain in Laos, posing everyday risks to people. Similar concerns have arisen in battles in Lebanon and Iraq or places remain dangerous. This persistent risk has prompted worldwide requests for restrictions under agreements such as the Convention on Cluster Munitions. Despite this, some countries, arguing military need, continue to store and employ them fueling the debate. With the only operational strategic stealth bomber, the U.S. military has an edge in getting munitions onto targets anywhere in the world without detection. Once a target is exposed, they can drop any kind of munition on that target, from J-dams to massive ordnance air bursts. No terrorist or belligerent organization is safe. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.